Our Father and our God, we bless you. We give you all the glory. Let your name be exalted. Let your name be magnified. Lord, even as we have started dominating from a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, here we are. Father, that dominion will be forever in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Let your name be exalted. In Jesus' awesome name we pray. Somebody shout hallelujah.
Judah. Oh, we worship you. We exalt your supremacy. We ask Lord God that as we are about to hear your word, that your word will come with simplicity. That everyone who hears will understand. And at the end of the day, Lord, give us the grace that this word will bear fruit in our life and receive all the glory. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let somebody who knows he or she is dominating, shout it, dominating, hallelujah. I want to thank God for the opportunity to stand before you on this exalted and life-transforming altar. I want to also thank our Father in the Lord, our mentor, our leader, our coach, our role model, and also our mother in Israel, Daddy and Mommy Gio. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma. It is our prayer that we will always represent you well in the name of Jesus. Permit me also to appreciate the Intercontinental Youth Pastor and all the youth pastors and leaders. Pastor and Pastor Mrs. Belemina Obonge. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma. God bless you and honor you greatly in the name of Jesus. I've been asked to speak on the topic dominion and i'll be taking my bible text from genesis 1 verse 26 genesis 1 verse 26 and i read and god said let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the heads. We cannot talk about dominion without talking about the word domain. Because domain is the territory to which dominion is established. Mathematically, domain is a set of elements to which every mathematical or logical variable is limited. That is to say, in the circumference of that domain, the mathematical and logical variables are valid. Praise the name of the Lord. Then again, what is dominion? When we talk about dominion, dominion entails supreme authority. It entails absolute ownership. When we talk about supreme, we are talking about the highest, highest authority. When we talk about absolute ownership, we are talking about independent ownership. That is to say that the plan of God for man 
is that man has the highest authority here on earth which is the domain of man which is the domain of man it is the plan of god and the purpose of god that man has absolute ownership of the earth i will be talking about dominion in two perspectives i'll be talking about dominion in two perspectives the first perspective is dominion as a position dominion as a position and then the second one is dominion as a reality dominion as a position dominion as a reality first what is dominion as a position on earth adam was the first man to come into this particular position of dominion god created adam and gave him dominion over the earth he created him and gave him dominion over everything on earth so he was the first man that stepped into this particular realm of dominion by position but sadly adam lost this dominion by the deception of satan he lost the dominion but thanks be to god who gave us jesus who came to be a reconciliator and a restorer he restored us back to the position of dominion which is the mandate and the point of god creating man he wants us to have dominion so that we can bring he heaven on earth make it a similitude of heaven just the way god is ruling in heaven he wants us to rule on earth because earth is our domain earth is our domain Positional dominion does not have to do with your work. Beloved, you do not have to do anything for you to come into the position of dominion. For you to come into the position of dominion, it is already a work of grace. It is a already a work of grace. The Bible speaking in Ephesians chapter 2, 8 to 9. Ephesians chapter 2, 8 to 9. It says that ye have been saved by grace through faith. It says it is not of your own work, lest you should boast of it. So every man who is in the position of dominion did not do anything to come into that point. It was by the grace of God that you come into that position of dominion. The benefit of the position of dominion, the benefit of the position of dominion is that you have power over sin and death. The benefit of the position of dominion is that you have power over sin and death. What do I mean by power over sin and death? When we talk about power over sin, the Bible says that he has delivered us from the law of sin. When we talk about power over death, in the book of in the book of John chapter 11 verse 25. In the book of John chapter 11 verse 25, the Bible speaking, Jesus was saying, it says, "I am the resurrection and the life." It says, "Any man that believes in me, any man that believes in me, though he is dead, yet will he live." So in that particular instance, you have power over death. Even if you die on that resurrection money, if you have the position of dominion, you will still come back to life. You will still come back to life. So the benefit is that you have power over sin and death. However, being in this particular position of dominion, being in this particular position of dominion, does not give you the rights or authority to express the dominion. Being in this particular positional dominion does not give you the right to exercise dominion praise the lord in the book of galatians in the book of galatians 4 verse 1 galatians 4 verse 1 the bible speaking says so long as the heir is a child he's not different from the servant which means he already has this particular position but because he's still a child he cannot command the authority attached to this particular position. That is why it is necessary that we do not remain as children, but we come to the level of sonship. That we come to the level of sonship. Everybody who is in the position of dominion is a child of God. Position of dominion is for children of God. But when we leave that particular point of position of dominion, now we are talking about sons. Sons, we are talking about sons. We are talking about sons. So that will take us to the other aspects. To the other's perspective of dominion which is dominion as a reality dominion as a reality this particular stage of dominion is only for sons it's only for those who has grown to the point of sonship it is not for children positional dominion we can leave it for children but when we talk about dominion as a reality it is only for sons so it is necessary that you move from the level of a child to the level of sons so that you can express the dominion as a reality in this particular stage we said in the earlier position of dominion that it is not your work that brought you there but in this stage of reality of dominion you have to put in work 
Work is necessary. Work is necessary. Tell your neighbor, work is necessary. Because the Bible says in Philippians chapter 2, Philippians chapter 2, verse 12 to 13, it says, work out your salvation in fear and trembling. It means that there is a work that you have to do. Believers, there is a work you have to do. If you must express the reality of dominion, there is a work you have to do. And in the book of Galatians 4 verse 2, Galatians 4 verse 2, it was still talking about the hair. It says that when he was a child, that he is under tutelage. That means there is a work that the teachers are doing on him. And there is a work he needs to do to learn before he can come into the reality of dominion. Praise Master Jesus. Just like Adam, just like Adam, Jesus was tempted. Jesus was tempted just like Adam. But because he had grown from child to sonship, he was not defeated by the temptation of the devil. He was not defeated by the temptation of the devil. Though the devil tried him three times. He only took one time for Adam to fall. But Jesus was tried three times. He did not fall because he's already a son. He had grown in wisdom. He had grown in stature. He had grown to the necessity of being a son. He had all that is required to be a son. So therefore, he was not carried away by the deception of the devil. Jesus came to right the wrong. He came to right the wrong of Adam and to restore us back to the position of dominion. And to do this, he had to come as a child. And he grew from being a child to a son. It was written in the, in the Bible that on the day he was baptized, once he came out of the water, that God spoke and he says, this is my beloved son. This is my, he did not say this is my beloved child. He says, this is my beloved son. There is a necessity that every man who would express the reality of dominion should become a son. You should have grown to the level of sonship. He came to right the wrong. And for you to be, for you to move from the level of child to the level of son, you need to understand that there are processes. There are processes. There are processes. And you should not skip any of the process. You see, gravity is against jumping. But gravity is not against growth. Gravity is against jumping. But gravity is not against growth. So you need to grow and not to jump. You need to grow and not to jump. When you grow to that point, you express dominion. When you go to that point, you express dominion. How do I move from positional to reality? How do I move from positional dominion to reality dominion? How do I do that? First, we are not talking about salvation in this area of dominion as a reality. Because if you've already assessed that position, it means you've dealt with salvation. It means you already have salvation. That is why I'm pleading with as many who has not got into the stage of positional dominion. If you know you are here and you've not got into the stage of positional dominion by accepting Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, when our Father in the Lord comes to make the altar call, you should be the first person to run to the altar and settle the point of position before we talk about the reality. That is when the next set of things I will be mentioning will be useful to you. How do I move from position to reality dominion? Number one, you must have the consciousness of dominion. Somebody say consciousness of dominion. Beloved, whatever you cannot conceive in your mind, whatever that you cannot bring up in your mindset, you cannot have it. If you cannot have it in your mindset, it will not come physically. So for you to express dominion, your consciousness should be that you are dominating. Your consciousness should be that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Greater is he that is in me. Book of John, first John chapter 4 verse 4. Book of first John chapter 4 verse 4. It says that greater is he that is in me. That is the consciousness we are talking about. When you carry the consciousness that is greater in you than in the world. Uh, you go to that interview. And whenever you step there, you know there's a greater in you. Uh, if they do not accept you, uh, you walk out of the place. Uh, you are not depressed. Uh, because you know there is greater in you. Uh, when you walk to another uh, uh, company, they will accept you. Because there is a greater in you. You do not go depressed. There is the greater in you. That is the consciousness of those who want to dominate. The consciousness of those who want to dominate. You need to have that consciousness. Number two. Number two, you must understand and practice covenants. You must understand and practice covenants. What are covenants? Covenants are rituals born out of consciousness. Covenants are rituals born out of consciousness. You must understand in this kingdom, 
we rise by obeying covenants. In this kingdom, we rise by obeying covenants. If you do not obey covenants, some things that are necessary for your life, you cannot get it. If you must dominate, then you must practice covenants. I'll mention some few covenants that are very necessary. Number one, the covenant of peace. The covenant of peace. In the book of Isaiah 26 verse 3, Isaiah 20, 26 verse 3, it says, Thou will keep in perfect peace those whose mind are stayed on you. When we talk about covenant, there is something you have to do. It says, if your mind is stayed in God, if you can trust in him, he said he will keep you in perfect peace. That is a covenant. We'll talk about another covenant, the covenant of protection. Psalm 91, 1 to 2. Psalm chapter 91, 1 to 2. And it says that he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. If you must come under the protection of God, then you must dwell in the secret place. You must dwell in the secret place. That is where the protection is. We'll talk about another covenant. Another covenant. Covenant of prosperity. Covenant of prosperity. Malachi 3 verse 10. Malachi 3 verse 10. It says, bring your tithe into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house and prove me this day and see if I will not pour out the blessings of heaven, open the windows of heaven and pour out the blessing upon you that there will be no room to enough to contain. If you must prosper, then you need to obey the covenant that is attached to prosperity. You must obey the covenant that is attached to prosperity. Pay your tithes, give your offerings, so see to the work of God. It is necessary for your covenant to work. It is necessary covenant of provision. Psalm 23, Psalm 23 says, The Lord is my shepherd. If you must be under that covenant, then you must be a sheep that he's shepherd over. Another point for you to move from positioner to the point of reality in dominion is practice the great commission. Practice the great commission. Mark chapter 16 verse 15. Mark chapter 16 verse 15. It says, preach the gospel to every creature. If you cannot preach to humans now, start with the, start with the dogs. Start with the trees. Until you get to the point that you can preach to humans. Do your practice. Do your practice. Because the great commission is necessary. Everyone who is in Christ must preach the gospel. Everyone who is in Christ must preach the gospel. That is why in this mission, we take soul winning very serious. We take soul winning very serious. Just as every believer should do. Another point to move from positioner to reality in dominion. Another point to move from positioner to reality in dominion. Build capacity and competence. Build capacity and competence. In the book of 2 Timothy 2 verse 15. 2 Timothy 2 verse 15. It says, See that a man diligent in his business. That is competence. That is competence. If you must be dominating, you cannot dominate a sphere you are not competent in. You cannot dominate a sphere you are not competent in. If you must dominate, then you must be competent. And also in the book, and also in the book of Luke chapter 2 verse 52. Luke chapter 2 verse 52. It says, Jesus grew in stature and in wisdom. That is capacity. That is capacity. You need to grow. Build capacity. Acquire skills. It is necessary for you to dominate. Acquire skills. Skills, I define it as gift that went to school. Some of you have the gift of singing. But somehow you cannot produce it because you have not schooled that gift. Skill is gift that went to school. Carry the gift and put it in school and it will produce results. Men will look for you. You don't need to look for them. They will look for you anywhere you step into because you have the skill. Because you have the skill. Another point to grow from positioner to the reality of dominion is consecration. Consecration. See, in this kingdom, in this kingdom, it is only by consecration that you can actually carry God. He said, when we talk about the positioner, and we said that greater is he, that was the consciousness, we said greater is he that is in me. That he that is in you is holy. So if you're not consecrated, then you cannot dominate. You need to be so consecrated that you are concentrated with God. You need to be so consecrated that you are concentrated with God. That is the way to dominate. That is the way to dominate. In the book of Titus 2, Titus 2, 11 to 12, Titus 2, 11 to 12. It says, For the grace of God has appeared unto all men. That the grace of God has appeared unto all men. In the, in the, the grace of God teaches us to deny ungodliness. To deny ungodliness. It is a necessity that you deny ungodliness for you to dominate. Another point for you to move from positioner to the reality of dominion is communion with the Holy Spirit. 
Somebody say communion with the Holy Spirit. You need to commune with the Holy Spirit. You need to get the recent information. You cannot dominate with obsolete information. It is only in the place of communion that he can tell you this is what is happening. He will give you the information part time that you need to dominate. If you do not stay in the place of communion, if you do not stay in the place of communion with the Holy Spirit, then you cannot dominate. Because the world is changing daily. Things are changing. You need the recent information from God. You need the recent information for you to be able to dominate. The Bible speaking in the book of Luke 18 verse 1. Luke 18 verse 1. It says, men ought always to pray and not to faint. Beloved, pray. Beloved, pray. It is a necessity for your dominion. Beloved, pray. It is a necessity for your dominion. The Bible speaking, it says that Elias was a man of light person. But he prayed earnestly. Every man who dominates is a man of prayer. Check the Bible. Check the Bible. Everyone who dominated their sphere. And they were men and women of prayer. You need to pray your way out. Our father and the Lord just yesterday, he told us how he prayed when he was younger. And even now he's still praying. As a youth, what are you doing? As a youth, what are you doing? Are you still sleeping? Are you still sleeping? Men ought always to pray. You need to pray. Every point, pray. At every point in time, you are in the car, pray. You are in your house, pray. You are in the hostel, pray. Every time you need to pray because it is necessary for you to dominate. You need the recent information. Part time, what is happening? Part time, what do I need to do? When you are confused, you go to the place of communion and then you are asking God, what do I need to do to dominate? What do I need to do to dominate? That is when you can be able to dominate by prayer. By prayer. Number seven. Number seven, number seven. How do I move from positional to reality of dominion? By your confessions. By your confessions. By your confessions. Isaiah 3 verse 10. He says, say ye to the righteous, it shall be where. Isaiah 3 verse 10. Say ye to the righteous, it shall be where. You need to confess it. It is well with me. It is well with my family. I am dominating. I am taking places. It is well with me. You need to confess it. Keep saying it until it becomes your reality. Keep saying it until it becomes your reality. Keep saying it until you see it. Keep saying it. The righteous, it shall be well. I am righteous. It shall be well with me. Say to the righteous, it shall be well. If you are here this day and you want to dominate, rise to your feet. Even as we take the confessions, start making confessions about your dominion. Start saying, it is well with me. Start saying, I dominate the spheres. Uh, every sphere I find myself, uh, the spheres of influence, I dominate. In art, I dominate. In my marriage, I dominate. In my academics, I dominate. I shall fulfill my destiny. Make those confessions uh, because it is from your mouth that God needs to hear it and he will establish it because you have said it. So you need to say something to God. Begin to make those confessions. Begin to make those confessions. Begin to make those confessions. I am dominating in my academics. I am dominating in my career. I am dominating in my place of work. I am dominating in my house. Wherever I find myself, I dominate. And every confession you have made this day, the God of heaven will hear you and it will make it your reality in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray.